We begin the Gemara today on Daf Yud Amit Beis, towards the bottom of the Yamud, six lines or five lines from the bottom of the Yamud, where it says, Rab Shimon This goes back to the Mishnah here, discussing a shtar that's written in a court, a legal document. So the question is, can this be used? So the Tanakam in the Mishnah says that when it comes to all shtaris for money matters, and the Gemara before discusses whether this is for a shtar Kenyan or a shtar Raya, that the shtar could be used. And the reason is because, what it says before, Dina de Machus so on. Okay, that's the... But Rab Shimon comes and says, not only legal documents could for money matters could be used, but even a get for an Isha, and a shtar Shechra for an Evet. And this is something where the Goyim are not in this halacha b'chlal. So you need to have a document to create a divorce or to create a shikhrar. So the Tanakhama says for that, a guy is not believed at all. But Rab Shimon comes and says, and so it's really the Gemara he brings, it's said in the Mishnah, Rab Shimon, Oime, Af Eiluk Sheirim V'chulu. Even for a get of an Isha and the Shtar Shikhrar of an Eved, from a Gaiish court with Gaiish signatures, it'll still be kosher. But a guy is not in the parish of Krisus. It says in the Torah, you write a say for Krisus. If you're in the parish of Krisus, you could sign a get. But if not, your signature is worthless. So how could Rab Shimon say that the signatures of Goyim on a get will make it a kosher get? Omer Rab Rab answers, Yorad Rab Shimon, Lishitosa Sharab Rab Shimon over here is saying this because he holds like the opinion of Rabbi Loza. The Omar, Rabbi Loza says, Eide Mesire Karti. Rabbi Loza's opinion is that the Eide Mesire, the Eidim that are there, when you give the get to the Isha, those are the Eidim that are Machsha the get. So even if you have the Eidim that are signing the get that are Goyim, doesn't matter. We have the Eide Mesire that when you give the get, and that's kosher. But still, it should be possible because for Omer Rabbi said, Maybe Rabbi Loza, Rabbi Loza agrees be mezuyev mitoychay shapasal that when you have a get and there's a forgery inside the get, what does it mean a forgery inside the get? So over here it means that you have pasal edus that signed the get, you have goyim that signed the get. <coughs> so even though minatayir this get is kosher because of the edim esire, but the signatures in the get should make it pasal with the rabbanon. And Rashi brings the reason is because there's exayda. If, you're, have, if you have these signatures in the get, you may come to use those very same witnesses when you give the get to the Isha. So why is Rab Shimon not, uh, does Rab Shimon not agree to this Gzeda, that even Rabbi Lazar is made that it should be possible with these guys' signatures? Answers the Gemara, Hacha B'maya Skinon, what are we talking about over here that Rab Shimon said that the get is kosher? The Shema is Muvhakin. The names of the Goyim that are signing this get is, is very clearly Goyish names. So names that you never use such kind of names, so it's clear that you're not going to use those same people that signed the get to give the get to the Isha, because everybody knows that you can't rely on a guy for the proper Edom that are needed, which according to Rabbi Lazar is the Edom Mesira. Sorry, this is not... Yeah, so B'Shem is talking. Oh, so the Gemara here asks and uh, clarifies what's considered to be shameless move hokin, clearly Gaisha names. Hey, Chidomi, shameless move hokin. Amar Rav Papa, Rav Papa says, Kagain, Hormis, Vovdina, Bar Shivsoi, or Bar Kidri, or Bati, Vinokim, Una. These are all clearly Gaisha names that if they're signed in the get, it, the get is kosher. In a case where you have additionally Eid and and you're not concerned that you're going to use these Goyish Eidim to give the get for the Isha. Aval, Zakti Gemara, Aval, Shemoi, Sheimu Vokit. So now, what are you explaining here? That according to Rab Shimon, the get is kosher because the signatures in the get are of Goyim that are clearly non Jewish names, so we're not concerned you're going to use them. Aval, Sheimu, Sheimu Vokim, but what does that mean if you had the Goyish signatures in the get and it's not clear that it's Goyim? My, what's the din then? So then, Loi? So then this get is not kosher? If so, what does it say in the continuation of the Mishnah? The next part of the Mishnah says that Rab Shimon continues. It seems like this is Rab Shimon speaking, and Rab Shimon says, We haven't mentioned the psal of, uh, of a star. 
only when the shtar is not even done in a court at all, if it's done by just plain gayim, so then the shtar will be possible. So Rav Shimon is saying, as long as it's done by a court, any shtar is kosher, including a get isha as well. If it's made by a hediyat, only then will it be possible. That's the continuation of the Mishnah. Frakta Gemara, but lift like the listni bidida. But according to the pshat that we're saying here in Rav Shimon, we can make a distinction even in a case where the get is written in a court. And we can say as follows. When do I say that when it's in a court and it's signed by Goyim, that it'll be kasha b'shem as mufhakin? When the names are clearly non-Jewish, so you won't come to rely on them for the Eid Mesira. But if it's not clear that they're non-Jewish names, so loy, so then it's not kosher because you may come to use it for the edim that are there when you give the get. And says the Gemara, that's actually what the Mishnah means. This is what the Mishnah Taka meant. When is a get isha in a Goyish court with Goyish signatures kosher? When it's clearly non-Jewish names. But if the names are not clearly non-Jewish, then this is as if it was written by plain Goyim, upsulin, and therefore it'll be possible. That's really what the Mishnah meant to say. Okay, so therefore this is one pshat over here in the Seifa of the Mishnah. So according to this pshat, it's actually Rav Shimon speaking. And Rav Shimon is making this distinction regarding the signatures, whether it's Shemus Mufakin or Shemus Shainu Mufakin. Rashi over here points out that there's another reason why in the simple pshat of the Mishnah, when it makes, when it says here that Bizman Shanasu Behedyit, that if this get is written just by plain Goyim, that it would be possible, you can't really say the simple pshat of the Mishnah, that if it's written by plain Goyim, it's possible. And the reason is because the Gemara explained that we're talking over here about a get, that there are Edim Mesida when you give over the get. So what difference does it make if it's written in a court? or it's written by plain Goyim. If there's Eide Mesire, that makes the Get Kasha. As long as the signatures in the Get are from names, non-Jewish names that are clear, that you won't come to use them for the Eide Mesire, it should be Kasha. So really the Mishnah itself, the distinction that it says there, that there's a difference if it's in a court or not in a court, is not really understood. That's what the Gemara over here is saying, that really what the Mishnah means to say is, just like regarding other documents, not a Get, just like regarding other documents, when we're using the document itself, as a proof for, for any money matter that took place, and there are no Edim Mesira there. So there, if it's made by plain Goyim, so then we don't trust plain Goyim to, as a proof. So here the Mishnah is saying the same when it comes to a get, there's a distinction regarding the signatures, if it's Shemus Mufhakim or Shemus She'eim Mufhakim, that if it's Shemus She'eim Mufhakim, it's possible just like other documents that are written by Hed Yaitin, by some people from the street. That's one shot. Vibai Seime, another pshat in the Seifa of the Mishnah. The Seifa is not of Shimon talking. The Seifa goes back to the opinion of the Tanakhama. What did the Tanakhama of the Mishnah say? That when you have documents that are in courts, written in by a legal court, that's kosher. So now the Seifa is the Chachamim, the Tanakhama, continuing to explain their opinion. Also on the Gite Mamet, it's talking about every money, any money document. And this is what the Tanakhama is saying. When was it mentioned in the Bismedrish that Stam documents that are signed by Goyim are possible? That's only if it's written by plain Goyim in the street and they have no reputation to be worried about and therefore we don't rely on them and being honest and signing the get. But if it's a, if it's a court, a legal court, so then the Tanakhama says it's kosher. So this is part of the Tanakhama statement, not part of Rav Shimon's statement. Well, according to, uh, that's if it's Rab Shimon. If it's Rab Shimon, uh, then it's uh, by a get isha, it uh, has to be daf kishemus muvhokin. But over here, now the Gemara is saying that it's going according to the Tanakhama, and that has nothing to do with shemus muvhokin or not muvhokin. It's talking about a, a, a get momai, a get to all shtaris. And regarding all shtaris, Chacham and the Tanakhama are making a distinction between a legal document in a court and just a plain document written by a head yet, any person in the street, any guy in the street. Tanya, the Gemara here brings a Braise, where Rab Shimon brings more the source of his opinion. Amar Rab Laza, Rab Yaisi, Rab Laza, Rab Yaisi said, Ka Chamer Rab Shimon lechachamim b'tzidon. This is what Rab Shimon said to the chachamim b'tzidon to bring a source for his opinion that any document, including a get isha as well, if it's signed in a legal court, and then there's Eid and Mesira, that it would be kosher. 
Because Le Nachluku, Rabbi Kiva the Chachomim, Rabbi Kiva and the Chachomim, they're not having an argument about this subject. Rashi says, Rabbi Kiva and the Chachomim were a generation before Rabbi Shimon. So he's saying, the previous generation, when they argued about this, they did not argue Al Kol Ashtar Asylum Ber regarding any documents that are in a legal court of Goyim, Shabbat Pishach Esmeim Wev Dikachovim, and the ones that signing it are also Goyim Kshedim. Everybody agrees that it's kosher. Because we rely on the court, the reputation that they're worried about, and they're trusted. It's kosher. Additionally, and here's the Raya Tarab Shimi's opinion, and even regarding a get for an Isha and the Shikhra, freedom for an Eved, they also did not argue about that, that in the court, with a Goyesha signature, it'll be kosher, as long as you have Eide Misira, as we explained before, because that's the main Eidus of the get, according to Rabbi Loza. Elo bizman shenasu behedye. The argument was between Rabbi Kiv and the Chachamim regarding all documents when the documents are written by Stam, a plain ordinary guy in the street. Should Rabbi Kiv machsha? Rabbi Kiv, even in such a case, says it would be kosher. So some Rishayim say this means Rabbi Kiv goes so far to say that even a plain guy in the street is worried about lying and he's afraid that the authorities will catch him when he lies and signs a document and if it's false. So even a guy, a plain guy in the street, could be trusted. Other Yishayinim say, when Rabbi Kivi here says that it's kosher, that's only if, in addition to the guy's signature, there were also Eidim Mesire that were there when the get was given over. The Chachamim Paislim, Chachamim say that any document used for any money matter, if it's signed by a plain guy in the street, it'll be possible. Machot migite noshim v'shechrure avadim. But actually, the Chachamim say that a get isha and a shikhar of an eved will be kosher. And this is again based on Abshimin's opinion. And the point here is a document for a money matter. So the reason why the Chachamim say it'll be possible if it's just signed by a plain guy in the street is because what are you using this document for? You're using this document as a document of proof. So Chachamim say, how could you use it as a document of proof if it's written and signed by a plain guy in the street? A plain guy in the street is not trusted at all. But by Kiti Nashim and Shechrure Yavodim, so we already explained before that we're, we're following Rabbi Laz's opinion. So, in addition to the signature of this plain guy in the street, you have the Eidim Isira as well. And as Rabbi Laz explained, the Gemara explained before, according to Rabbi Shimon, that it's clear that it's Goyesh's signature. So, there's nothing to be concerned about that you're going to use those signatures to also be the Eidim Isira. So, therefore, by Kiti Nashim Shechrure Yavodim, it's Kasha. So this is like Rabbi Shimon's opinion before. Rabshem Gamliel Rabshem Gamliel says, Af Eiluk Shadim, this that you're saying of it regarding the get Isha, that it'll be kosher. When is that? That's only in a place where the authorities did not allow Jews to sign a document. So then, when you have the Goyesha signatures in the document, there's no concern you're going to use these Goyesha signatures as the Ede Mesira as well, because everybody knows that the signatures in the get are Goyim because the authorities didn't allow Yidin to sign it. But if it's in a place, regular country, where they allow Yidin to sign the document, so then so then we cannot, you, you cannot use such a get Isha with these Goyesha signatures, even if you have Eide Mesire, and the reason is because it's a place where they allow Yidin to sign, and in other words, Rav Shem Gamliel is arguing with the point that the Gemara said before. The, before the Gemara said, as long as it's clearly Goyesh signatures, Shemus Mufhokin, we're not concerned that you're going to use those witnesses as the Eidim Misira. But here Rav Shem Gamliel says, no, there's a Gzeda. If you're going to allow, if you're going to be Machsher Goyesh signatures, when it's Shemus Mufhokin, you may be Machsher Goyesh signatures that are not Mufhokin. So therefore, we don't accept any Goyesh signatures unless it's a place that you know that they don't allow Yidin to sign. Then it's clear for everybody that it's Goyesh signatures. So the Gemara asks on this, why don't we make a here as well? Basically, Rabbi Shem Gamliel is saying that we don't want to allow any Goyesha signatures, whether it's clear as Goyesha signatures, whether it's not, because people may confuse them. So if so, we should say the same thing. Makaim she'en Yisrael Chaisman, a place where Yidin don't sign, they don't allow Jews to sign a document. Nami Lekza, shouldn't we make similarly a Gezeda to say, Otu Makaim she'en Yisrael Chaisman, since there are other places where Yidin are allowed to sign. So therefore, it's not clear if these signatures are hidden and goyim, so we should, shouldn't we, according to Rabshim Gamliel, make a gzeda across the board that we never rely on non-Jewish signatures. Just like he makes a gzeda that we 
I, I, we don't make a distinction between Shemus Muvhakin or Shemus Shemus Muvhakin, and we always passel it, so too, there shouldn't be a difference whether it's a place where they only allow Yidin to sign, or don't allow Yidin to sign, or do allow. Why over here does he not make Xeda? So the Gemara explains it's not the same kind of thing. The reason is, Shema Bishma Michlif, when it comes to allowing Goyim to sign. So if you're going to start making a difference, that is it clearly Goyish names, not clearly, clearly Goyish names, over there, that's something people will confuse. So therefore, they made it that any Goyish names cannot be signed in a get. Asra ba Asra loy michlef. But to say that you're going to make a gzeda, that in the places where they don't allow Yidin to sign, it should also be possible because of other places where they do allow Yidin to sign. It's different places, it's different locations. Over there, there's no gzeda. There's no, people won't get confused about this. Zakta Gemara Ravine Savalach Shuri Ravine thought to be Machsher, a document that was written. So again, this is based on the Mishnah here that says that a document that was written in a court, a legal document of a court, that's reliable, but not from a head yet, not from some, any person in the street. But Ravina thought to be Machsher Biknufiasa the Armoi. There was a group of prominent Gaim that got together. They weren't a real legal court, but they were sort of prominent Gaim that got together to do some money matters. And he, Rabbi Ravina thought that that is basically the same like a legal court. So therefore we can say that a document that they're writing and signing is kosher. Amalei Rafram, Rafram said no. Even if they're, they're similar to a court, but they're not a court. It has to be a proper legal court. Only then could we rely on this document. Omar Rav says, Hai Shtar Parso. This document, a Persian document. So here now, the Gemara Rav here is talking about the document that's being used in a loan. Okay, so the Loive, the borrower, gives this document, a Persian document that was written in Persian, it's signed by Persian Goyim, and that's the document that he gives to the, the, to the uh, lender as a document to be able to prove that he borrowed money from him. The Muslim Alei Ba Pisad Yisrael, now you gave it, the Loive gave it to the Malve in front of Edim Isira, in front of uh, Yiddish Edim that saw this. So even though the ones that signed it were plain Goyim, Rashi says, we're not talking very about a legal document written in a court. We're talking about Stam, a document that plain Persian Goyim wrote and signed. But because it was, because it was given over in front of Yidin, so therefore, because of the Eide Meside, you can use this document to collect the loan from Bnei Chayden. Okay, so this is, this is going to be an argument in Bezdin, and the, the label will say that uh, he never borrowed the money. The Malva can use this document to prove that the money was borrowed, and he can collect Nibnei Chori. Nibnei Chori means only from properties that are in the Leva's possession, but not from any properties that the Leva sold off, which are called Meshubadim. Frek de Gemara, wait a minute. How Bechlal, this document is written in Persian, signed by Persians, it's not at all a proper document. There's so many details about this document that are wrong, as the Gemara here asks. The, the document was given over in front of Yidin. Yidin. But they can't even read the document. It's written in Persian. So how, what, what's the worth? What's the value of having over here this Yidin that are seeing that was given over to them? And says the Gemara, No, they understand Persian. They can read what it says in the document. Asks the Gemara, But There's another halacha about a document that it has to be a document that cannot be forged. And uh, Rashi explains that, as we see here in the Gemara, that the, the parchment has to be a proper parchment that was worked out properly, that you can't easily erase and replace it with a different number. You're going to write $100 and you can erase and add another zero or whatever it is. So it, it, the, the Persians, they don't use proper documents, proper parchment. So how could, how could the star even be trusted? Veleke, you know, it's not proper here. Answers the Gemara, no, beda fitzan. This document was properly worked out. Afitzong is with gall nuts. They would uh, put the proper chemicals and whatever to, to make it a good document that cannot be erased. But there's another halacha about a star to make sure that the, that the star is trusted. And that is, There's a halacha, the Gemara says in Baba Basra, when you write a star, then at the last line, right before the signatures, you have to write again the point of the star on the last line. So you shouldn't be able to forge and put anything else in between. So you have to write it over again. And Veleke, in a Persian document, they don't do so. And it says the Gemara, no, Bimahadir. It was written in Persian on a proper parchment. And they also wrote again on the last line, the point of the star. So therefore it's good. So now it comes out that we basically have a perfect star. The only issue is that the ones that signed it are playing going from the street. 
But we do have Eide Misira that are yidden, and the Eide Misira, according to Rabbi Loza, makes the Shtar a kosher Shtar. If so, even from Mishabadim. Why is it saying that you could only collect from the Loiva partially? You could only collect from those properties that he has in his possession. If you have a proper star, the halacha is a loan that has no star, you could only collect from the, from the possessions he has in his, uh, the properties he has in his possession. But if it's a proper star, you should be able to collect with this document, even from Mishabadim, properties that were sold off. Answers the Gemara, no, less late caller. Just with these Eid Misira, there's no proper rumor that is created from this, this document here. As Rashi explains, only the Eid Chasimah, the Eid that sign a Shtar and have to read the Shtar and see every single word of the Shtar properly, that creates a rumor about this. So the buyer of any property of this borrower sh should have known about this. And therefore, if now we're going to confiscate this property of him to pay up this loan, he can't have any tainus. You should have made your research and found out about it. But over here, if you only have Persian Edom signing on it, even if there's Yiddish Edom that see it, the Edom is see that don't create the same kind of rumor about this. They don't see the details of the star as much. They just see the star being given over. And therefore, it's, uh, you can't collect from the Meshubadim. Asked the following Shiloh of Rabbi Yechenen. Edim hachasumim ala get. You have Edim that signed on a, on a get, and this is talking about any document. Ushmaisan kishemais oivde kechavim. Or perhaps it's talking about a get. Isha, okay, let's see. Ushema, again, ushmaisan kishemais oivde kechavim. And the names of, uh, on this get is names that are similar to Gaisha names. Mahu, what's going to be the halacha here? So the question over here really is that it's not names that are 100% clear that it's Goyesha names. As the Gemara said before, Shem is Mavokan. If it's clear, it's Goyesha names. So we know, we know it's Goyesha names. But the Gemara Shaila is, you have over here names that are signed in this get, and it's not 100% clear. It could be Yiddish names, it could be Goyesha names. Could we be Machsha this get or not? Rashi says the question is, could we be Machsha this get with Eide Mesira? Okay, but not, we're not going to be machshed just with the Edom that signed it, but we're going to be machshed also with Edom Mesira. So Taisus over here explains that the Gemara Shaila is, it's not, it's not clear regarding the signatures, should we say that since it's not clear, so it's, it's very possible that it's Gaisha, Gaisha signatures. Okay? So it's, you don't see clearly what it is, it's, so we have to be chayshish for that, or no. Or do we say that probably people sign a document with Yiddish signatures, why should they use Goyim to sign a document? They probably signed it properly with Yiddish signatures. That's the Shaila. So Rabbi Yechanan answered Rish Lakish, Amalei, loi boi liyadeinu, el lukus veluz vehechsharnu. Such a kind of question when there was a document that was signed, and it was names like lukus and lus. And then we will machshir this get. This get. Okay, it's not. The Gemara explains. V'davke lukus v'lus d'loi shchichi yisrael demashki b'shmahasayo. Only these names, like lukus and lus, that Yidden never use such kind of names. It's clearly Gaisha names. So then we know that it's clearly Gaisha names. So this goes back to the halacha that Rav Shimon said before that it's Shemus Mufhakin. It's clearly Gaisha names, and you have Eide Misiri here, and we're passing like Rabbi Lazar, that Eide Misiri is good enough to be Machshir this get, so therefore the get will be kosher. But if it's other names, and it's not clear if it's Jewish names or non Jewish names, the Shchichi Yisrael, the Mashki Bishma Sayu, it's names that you didn't also use them, then the get won't be kosher. Why? Because basically what Rabbi Yechenen is saying is, in a case where it's a suffix, whether the names are Yidin or the names are Goyim, we're going to have to be Chayshish that the names are from Goyim. So if the names are from Goyim, it's going to be possible. Because it's a, a get which has Goyish signatures is only kosher if it's Shemus Mavhakin. But since it's not, it's not Shemus Mavhakin, it's not clearly non-Jewish names, it's going to be possible. So basically, again, Rabbi Yechenen is paskening that in a case of a suffix, we're going to have to be Chayshish that it's Goyish names. So on this ace fair, Shlokish asks Rabbi Yechenen, but it says in the Bryce as follows: Gitin abayim in Medina Sayam, a get that was brought from outside of Eretz Yisrael, the Aden chasumim aleim, and the Aden signed on this get, and it's not clear what these Aden, who these Aden are. Afa pishes shmeisayin kishem yisayv the kechavim, even though the names on this get look like possibly goyish Aden, it's not clear. Kishem, nevertheless, it's kosher. 
Lipni Shiroi Bisra Shabu Chutzlaret, Shmei Sayen, Kishem Yisraeli Kechavim. Because in Chutzlaret, most of the names of even the Yidin, they also have Goyesha names. So we see these Goyesha signatures, so we could say that it's Yiddish names. So what's Rab Eshlakish asking? Here you have a get that comes from Medina Sayyam. So yeah, Taka says that many Yidin used Goyesha names. But basically, you have here a case where there's a suffix. It's a suffix if it's Yiddish names or Goyesh names. And what is this Bryce saying? That in a case of a suffix, we don't have to be Choshish that it's Goyesh names. We just say that it's, it's probably Yiddish names. So similar in the case that Ishlakish brought up before, regarding a get over there, Rashi says when Ishlakish brought up his question, he wasn't speaking about a get that was coming from Medina Sayyam. He was speaking about a get that's coming from er- in Eretz Yisrael. But nevertheless, in the Havamin of the Gemara, the Gemara is thinking, true, there is a difference between Eretz Yisrael and Medina Sayyam. In Eretz Yisrael, you can't say that Roiv Yidin used Goyesha names. In Medina Sayyam, you could say that Roiv Yidin used Goyesha names. But nevertheless, the Gemara right now is thinking that even in Medina Sayyam, where Roiv Yidin used Goyesha names, but nevertheless, isn't it still a 50-50? Possibly it's Yiddish names and possibly it's Goyesha names. True, Roiv Yidin used Goyesha names, but still, there's also many Goyim in Medina Sayyam. So possibly Goyesha signatures were used here. And nevertheless... What does it say? We're not chayshush that it's Goyesha names. We say that it's Yiddish names. So this is a question on, Ish, on Rabbi Yechen, and it said before that in a case of a Suffolk, that we say that we're chayshush, that it's Goyesha names. So the Gemara answer is that no, a get that comes from Medina Sayyam is different. Hasan, Kedektani, Taimet, the Brisa itself says, Vipnei Shiroiv Yisro Shabuchutz Laaretz Shumay Sayyam Kishem Yisrael V'Gechavim. The Brisa says that most of the Yidin of Chutz Laaretz are using Goyesha names. So what's the Gemara really answering? The point the Gemara is saying is that there's a b'chlal, a svara, to say that a person won't choose Goyim to sign a document. Why should you choose Goyim to sign a document if you could choose Yidin? So that's b'chlal, a svara, we always say. So therefore, in Chutzla, that's where most Yidin have Goyish names, so then we say that probably it's Yidin. The fact that it's Goyim, that Goyim it looks like Goyish names doesn't matter because most Yidin use, use Goyish names. But in Eretz Yisrael, where most Yidin do not use Goyish names, so even though there's usually a svara that why would a person take a Goyish signature if you can take a Yiddish signature, but it, it looks like a Goyish signature. So therefore, there is more of a svara to be Chayshish to say that maybe it actually is a Goyish signature. Ve'ekedamri, another version of this discussion here between Rabbi Yechen and Rish Lakish, that when Ishlakish asked Rabbi Yechen and his Shaila, he asked him about a get that's coming from outside Eretz Yisrael, from Medina Sayyam, just like the case of this Braise. And Rabbi Yechen answered him, he brought him this Braise, what it says in the Braise. Okay, continuing the next Mishnah, this is another halacha which is related to the comparison that there is between a get Isha and a Shtar Shikhrur of an Evet. Person says, here, you're my shliach to deliver this get for my wife. Or, a master says, you're my shliach to deliver this shtarf to free my evet. If the master or the, 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 the uh, husband wants to retract from this, he can retract from this before it arrives to their hands. This is Rav Meir's opinion. So as we'll see in the continuation of the Mishnah, what is Rav Meir's opinion based on? When the shliach receives the get in his hands, he's, he first has to deliver it. it. It can't take effect. And the reason is because the Isha, or the Eved, didn't send him to be Zeich in it for them. He's the shliach l'hoilach, to deliver. Not a shliach l'kabbalah, that the moment he receives it, it's theirs and they're already divorced or freed. So therefore, he can retract from this. This is true regarding a get of an Isha that the husband can still retract until it comes to her hands. Not when it comes to the star that's there to free an Evet. Now what's the distinction? Says the Mishnah, we have the following rule. You can be Zeich in something which is a benefit for someone even if he never asked you to do it for him. You could go and be Zeich in it for him and you become like a Shliach. And therefore, it becomes his. But you cannot be zeichen in something which also has a, a loss in it for that person. So then you can't do it without him asking you and appointing you to be a shliach to do so. And therefore, say the Chachamim, there'll be a distinction between a woman becoming divorced or an Evet being freed. And what's the difference? When it comes to an Evet that you're freeing him, 
That's only a benefit for him. Why? Because when he was owned by his master, if his master decided that he doesn't want to feed him, that's shy. He's allowed to not even give him any food. So therefore, the Evet doesn't gain by being owned by his master. Not necessarily he's going to be fed. So therefore, when you're holding on to this document, so even if the Evet never appointed you to be zaycha in, in the document for his freedom, you can be zaycha in it for him without, without him asking you because it's a schos for him. Now, he, he doesn't gain anything by being owned from his master. He's acquiring his independence. It's only a schos for him. So therefore, how could the master retract if you were already zaycha in it for him? But for shaloy laws and this ishto in it a shoy. But a person is not allowed to decide that he's not going to give his wife mizaynis, that he's not going to feed his wife. So that is not allowed. So therefore, for a isha to become divorced, she has a loss. She's not, not going to get her parnasa. She's not going to get fed by her husband. So therefore, you can't decide you're going to be zaycha in it for your wife. So until it reaches her hands, the husband could be chayzer from this gerish and from this divorce. Amal lahem, so Rav Nei responds to this and says, but even by a evet, we do find that he loses something. What happens if a kayin owns the evet? So then the Allah is, a kayin can give to eat from the trumet to his wife and to the avadim as well. But when the evet is freed, he loses the right to eat from the trumet. Kishem shu the same like with a wife. So both for the evet and for the isha, it's considered to be a loss when they get divorced or freed. Amrullahi, so the Chachamim answered, no, that's not, that, that's not, uh, we don't consider that to be a loss directly from the freedom that he gets here. Nifnei shuhu kinyonoi, because really the main point over here is that he's only allowed to eat trumet because he's owned by his master. And now he's getting his independence, his freedom, and then he's not owned anymore. And then automatically he can't eat trumet, but it's not directly from the freedom itself of the, uh, of the shtar. Okay, the Gemara will explain more exactly uh, what Rav is responding over here. Zok to Gemara, Yosef Rav Huna v'Rav Yitzchak by Yosef came to Rav Yirmiya. Rav Huna and Rav Yitzchak by Yosef was sitting in front of Rav Yirmiya. The Yosef Rav Yirmiya would come and nam them. Rav Yirmiya was sitting and he was dozing off. The Yosef Rav Huna would come and Rav Huna was sitting and he was saying as follows: Shema mina mid Rabbanon. I can prove from the, the, the halacha of the Rabbana that it said here in our Mishnah, the following halacha. If you go and grab money for a balchayv, you can acquire it for that balchayv. What this means is that, let's say, Reuven owes Shimon money, and Reuven doesn't want to pay up. So Levi goes along, and he grabs money for, from Reuven for the purpose of the loan that's owed to Shimon. So you have, and uh, so the moment Levi grabs that money, Shimon is kind of the money while it's still in Levi's hands. Right away, you can grab it for Shimon, and Shimon is like in this. So we can prove from our Mishnah this halacha. Now, what exactly is the proof from our Mishnah? Because basically, over here in the Mishnah, the same thing is happening. The shliach here is being sent with this get for an isha. He never was appointed by the isha to be zaycheh in it. He was just sent by the husband to deliver the get. And nevertheless, we're saying that that is a svare, or actually regarding the um, the, shta, the, the, the shikhrar of a uh, evet, right? So, so that, that was the halacha of the Tanakhama, regarding the shtar shikhrar of an evet. Regarding the shtar shikhrar of an evet, we say that you could be zaycheh in this shtar shikhrar for the evet. Why? Because it's a benefit for him. It's a schus for him. You could be zaycheh in it for him. So, that, so you, you're grabbing onto this document from the master without ever being appointed to do so, and you're grabbing it for the benefit of this Evet. And as soon as you grab onto it, the Evet is Zaycheh in this. So similar, a person from the street could come and grab money from someone for the benefit of someone else that he owes the money to, and even though that guy never appointed you to do so, you Zaycheh in it. That's the Rai from our Mishnah. So the Gemara says the continuation of the conversation. There, Amalei of Yitzchak by Yosef. So Yitzchak by Yosef asks him, "Is that true that you're grabbing money from a borrower to pay up a loan for someone else? Could you go ahead and grab for him, even if it brings a loss to somebody else?" In other words, let's say this borrower, this Reuven that owes money, owes money to Shimon and to Levi. He owes money to two people. And Yehuda comes along, a fourth per person comes along and grabs money for Levi. But now by you grabbing money from Reuven for Levi, meanwhile, Shimon. So, for, for Shimon, so Levi's losing out. You're grabbing money for one person that he, uh, that he owes money, but someone else is losing out. Can you go ahead without being appointed and grab money, even though it's Chavla Chedim, someone else is losing out from this? Amalayim. 
Two people are grabbing? No, no, no. One person is grabbing money here. Okay. But this, this borrower, this loyve, owes money to two people. So when you're grabbing the money, nobody appointed you to do so. You want to do it because it's a din of, of zechia, you could be zeichah for someone else, something that's a benefit to him without ever being appointed as a shliach. So you're, you're so the Gemara is saying, could you even do so when you bring a loss to someone else? Is the kayach of zechus, of, of zechia, which is really based on shlichus according to Rashi. Does the chiddush of shlichus apply even in this case when you're causing a loss to someone else? Amalayim. So he answered him, yes, we could learn that from the Mishnah as well, that it does apply. Now, how do we learn from the Mishnah that it does apply? Because over here as well, you're grabbing this star from the master for the benefit of the Eved, even though it's a loss for the master. It not takes away from the master the ability to retract from this. And even after he retracts from it, you continue to hold it on for the Eved. So, so too, if you're grabbing money that's owed to one person, even though another person that, the, that money is also owed to is losing out from it, it doesn't matter. There is a chiddush of the Teireh that's called shlichis, and part of that chiddush of shlichis applies even to when you were not appointed, which is zechiyah, to be zechiyah for someone else, even if it's, a, if it's a loss for someone else. That was the conversation that he had. Now, Ada Hachi, in between, Isser Buhu Rab Yirmiyah, Rab Yirmiyah awoke. Amalahu, so he said to them, Dardiki, children, that this is not true, because Hachi Amar Abyechanan, this is what Abyechanan said. If you just come from the street and you decide to grab money from a borrower to pay up a loan, and it meanwhile it causes a loss to someone else that he owes money to, like Kana, you're not gonna have the power to be a shliach to acquire it for that person. That person has to grab it on his own. You can't be a shliach. You were never appointed here. This is just a zechiyah. So therefore, you can't be zeichen it if you were never appointed. If meanwhile, there's a loss for someone else. That's how Rashi learns this. Other Rishayim actually say, even a person that was appointed as a shliach, a per- so you, so you, uh, you owe someone money, and he appointed a shliach to go and, and pick up this, this money. Nevertheless, if you owe someone else money, you cannot be a shliach to pick up this money, to collect this money if it brings a loss to someone else. Because the chiddush of shlichus, that shluchus shlad mekamaisa was not set in a place when someone else is going to be, have a loss from this. Now, we have over here the Mishnah. This shliach is grabbing the shtar shichror of the Eved for the benefit of the Eved while it's a loss for the master. So he, so he said, no, there's no raya from a Mishnah, because In our Mishnah, when the master gave the, the shliach, this shtar shikha to deliver to the Eved, even though he's telling him basically, Hoylech, go, tenua, go give, deliver it. When he tells him deliver it, what he really is saying is, be zeiche in it for the Eved. Now, even though you may say, how could the master say, be zeiche in it for the Eved? The Eved was never asked if he wants to be zeiche in this. Okay, so for that we say, zachan ladem shaloi b'fanav. It's, it's, it's a benefit for the Eved, and therefore, you can be zeiche in it for the Eved without asking, it, asking him for it. But the point over here is, you can't consider the, our mission to be a case that you're causing a loss for the master. It's not chav la because when the master said to nu, he meant to say, Zachu, be Zaych in it for the Evet. So he already gave you the permission to be Zaych in it for the Evet. It's the, it's the master himself, which is the Achenim in this case. Right, but if, if we were to say that when the master says, deliver it, it's not like he's saying, be Zaych in it for the Evet. So then we could say, the master wants to give himself time to maybe be Chayzer, to be able to retract this. It takes uh, whatever time it'll take him to deliver it. So then you chav la'cheder, you took away his option to retract. But because when he says give, it's as if he said be in it right away. So the fact that you're taking away his option to retract is not a not a chay for him because he, it's as if he told you be in it right away. Talk to Can we finish this inyan over here till the till the until the next almond over here? So Amar Rav Chista. So the Gemara says Rav Chista said Hatoyfus l'bachay b'makom shachav la'cheder. This question whether you can go ahead and grab money that's owed to one person. Even though it causes a loss for someone else that the money is owes to. So, this idea is really a machlaikis between Rabbiliaz and the Rabbana and the Mishnah and Peya. What does it say there in the Mishnah? The, the Mishnah says, So, of course, the halacha of Peya is in the field, the corners in the field that have to be left only for poor people. So, what happens if you have a person that's not poor, or he could even be the owner here, and he's rich, and he goes and he collects the Peya. Who is he collecting it for? I'm collecting it, I'm reserving it for a specific poor person. 
Rabbi Yezah says, yes, you could be Zaycha for him. Chachamim say, no, you can't reserve and collect this pay if you're rich and it, you can't be Zaycha for yourself. So Chachamim say, you have to give the pay, that is. You give it to whatever Ani comes first. You can't be Zaycha in it for one Ani that you decide you want to reserve it for him. So what do we see over here, basically? The same point. This pay belongs to many, many Aniim. And you want to grab it for one, while it's Chav Lachedim. It brings a loss to the other Aniim. So Rabbi Yezir says, yeah, you can decide to do it as a schos for one Ani, even though it's Chav Lachedim. The Chachamim say, no, if it brings a loss to other Aniim, you can't. So we see here, this Machlaik is in this Mishnah. Amar HaMemes, HaMemes says, Vitei Merav Papa, other say Rav Papa said. There's no connection. And there's two reasons why not. Either we can say as follows. Dilme loihi. It's not the same thing. Because at kan lekam rabli yaza hosom. The only reason rabli yaza says it here. That you could grab for one ani. Even though there's a loss for other aniim. Ella, the reason is because the migu di iboi mafkalu lenichse vahava ani. Because really it's possible for you to be mafkir, to declare ownerless all of your possessions that you have that make you rich, and therefore you don't have a right to collect this pay for yourself. And v'hava ani. And then you would be a poor person yourself. And v'chazi So therefore, it's potentially fit for you to be zaycheh in this pay. So migad zachileh lenafsheh. So since you can be zaycheh in it for yourself, zachileh chavreh. So therefore, you can be zaycheh for anyone else as well. In a case where you could be zaycha in it for yourself, over here there's no issue of chav la chayrim. The issue of chav la chayrim is if you're being sent as a shliach, perhaps, or according to Rashi, even if, if, if you're not being sent as a shliach, but you decide to do a zuchus for someone else, then we say if it's chav la chayrim, you're an outside party, you don't have the right to do this if it's a loss for someone else. But here you're not an outside person. Over here you, you have the right to be zaycha in this for yourself. So that very same rights, you could also be zaycha in it for someone else. So this is a chiddusha, even though he doesn't presently have that right. It's potentially he could give you mafkir as nechassim, but that itself means that you really have right to this. You have the the option, the, the ability to be zayicha in this. Aval hachaloi, but if you hear in a case where there's one person from the street that just comes and collects a loan for one person that the money is owed to, and there's someone else that has a loss, this has nothing to do with you. So how could you cause a loss to someone else? Or we could say an opposite svara. But can they come to Rabbanon also? I can say, why did Rabbanon over there say that one uh, that this rich man can't come and collect for one ani, reserve it for one ani, and cause a loss to others? Maybe over here it's a special gzeir sakasiv el because the pasuk says lo yiselaket le ani. What does that mean? Don't don't collect for the ani. I mean the simple pshat of the pasuk over there is lo yiselaket le ani v'lager tazav esam. But he reads it together. Don't collect for an ani, which means lo yiselaket lo lo ani. Don't reserve it for one ani. So here there's Exodus HaKosov. Maybe regarding any other area, regarding when money is being owed, so one person can come and collect money for a friend of his that the money is owed to, even though it causes a loss to others. You don't have Exodus HaKosov there. So now the Gemara says, according to this uh, second pshat here, the Rabbi Lazar, Rabbi Lazar does not hold of this Exodus HaKosov. You could reserve the payer for one ani, even though others are losing out. Hi, Leiselaket, Mayavidlei. What does he learn out from this Leiselaket? Mibayalei, what he learns out from this is, Lahazer, Laani, Al Shaloi. This is telling you that the mitzvah of leaving Peya in your property is even if you yourself are on the level of an Ani. An Ani doesn't own uh, 200 uh, Masayim Zuz. And you're an Ani yourself. Even though you're an Ani yourself, you still have to leave it for other Aniyim to come. So the way you read the Pasuk Koran Tanah Balaz is, La Yiselaket. You're not allowed to collect. Laani. No matter who you are, you have to leave it for an Ani. And even, even an Ani has to leave it for other Ani. That's the Pshat Nagamara, a Pasik that is according to Rabbi Lazar.